Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Chorus Daily Briefing. Happy Monday. Today, I'm with the VP of Enterprise Sales West at Aclary, Anthony Cesario. Anthony, great to, great to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jim. Good to be here. How's your Monday kicking off? It's good. You know, I've got a, a hand-delivered uh, cappuccino today, which is very special. It's uh, out, of the, out of the ordinary, so thanks to my wife for that. I saw that come in. That's uh, nice little touches right now in these work from home environments that we're in. Little things. So I wanted to kick off right into the data and get your perspective. Most most recent data we have is that the number of recorded meetings week over week is up 4%. This is three straight weeks of improvement. What are you seeing out there, both in your own team at Clary and as well as the customers you're working with? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm surprised it's not more than 4%. Um, it's, uh, we're definitely seeing an uptick in, in the number of meetings. Um, you know, good and bad, honestly. Um, I, I think uh, one of the things we're focused on right now at Clary is um, making sure that as those meetings uptick, that people are, are taking care of themselves. Um, so, you know, we're, uh, you get to the end of the day, you've had, you know, 10 chorus meetings and, uh, you know, your brain hurts a little bit. You know, you have a headache, so um, we're starting to be thoughtful about, you know, giving our employees coaching on how to, how to schedule their day, scheduling downtime, scheduling no screen time, no meeting time, that kind of stuff. But yeah, we've definitely seen an increase in, in the number of meetings, uh, for sure. Yeah, we're going on two months of, of the world that we're in right now in terms of that environment. In terms of the, the no meeting time, tell me a little bit more. So what are some of the tactics? I think we've all been experiencing this. What are, what are some of the tactics that you've been putting in place? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple of things that, you know, we're challenging our team to do, um, you know, one, just, you know, as more meetings come on your calendar because you're available to, um, uh, for more meetings, um, always asking yourself, do I need to be in that meeting? And if so, what, what contribution am I going to make? Um, and that, that's, that's a real good kind of early filter. But then, you know, looking at things like, um, you know, we're challenging the team to do walking meetings where, you know, go for a walk in your neighborhood and take the meeting via phone, not just video all the time. Um, or, um, you know, when it comes to problem solving, you know, not always doing it in front of the screen, get on a piece of paper, get on the whiteboard. Um, and then, uh, you know, creative stuff. We see teams that are, are literally blocking out time where it's no yep. meeting time, where you're scheduling non-meetings <laughs> as a team so they can, you know, focus on creative work. But yeah, just things like that. We're experimenting with that kind of stuff. I love it. Anthony, you mentioned work from home remarkable as a strategy. Um, is everybody just embracing that concept? Totally. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, we talk a lot about remarkable at Clary, um, doing remarkable for our customers, you know, having remarkable experiences while, you know, while we're here. And um, it doesn't change when, when we're at home. So we're constantly asking employees for feedback, asking the leaders for feedback on what does Remarkable look like in a work from home environment and, and quickly executing on, on, on the suggestions um, that the people are bringing up. Love it. One of the other data points that we pulled this week was looking at you know, how deals are being impacted, especially as we are in kind of a reopening phase and getting, getting teams out there. Um, we looked at the risk of, you know, lack of decisions or decisions being pushed out, budget impacts, uh, impacting deals, and then just rejection. And overall, once again, it just validates that we're, as a sales community, we're seeing some phenomenal execution right now and some great innovations uh, to get through this time. What, what are you seeing from a forecasting? You know, Clary is known as one of the great forecasting companies out there for, for those listening. What are you hearing from customers and how's forecasting changing right now? Yeah, um, this is great data, by the way. I love it. Um, you know, you think about what the forecast is, right? And it's really the company's um, uh, the company's um, process for predicting revenue. Um, and in an environment like this, um, companies are looking for for revenue confidence, as we're calling it, uh, more than ever. Um, you know, obviously, Clary works with fantastic high growth companies, right? Uh, um, some of some of the greatest you know um, growth organizations in the world. So obviously, predictable revenue is always important. But in an environment like this, all the way down to the rep level, being able to communicate with some level of confidence, you know, how much revenue is going to come in for the quarter, um, this quarter, next quarter, and then second half of the year, um, is is just incredibly important because, you know. 
companies are, are, are retooling their operating plan around these forecasts. Um, so headcount decisions are being made, right? Product investment decisions are being made right now, you know, um, on your ability to forecast accurately right now. So um, because that's so important, we see companies that are really taking forecasting to a whole new um, level of detail on um, what the deals that are, that are being represented in commit, for example, um, you know, have you, go, you know, leaders are going into chorus and watching the meetings and, and seeing, um, you know, have we actually met with the CFO yep. and, and have they communicated that there's budget for this post replan and, you know, that level of detail um, is, is becoming more integral parts to, to more standard forecast calls. And you mentioned uh, risk and kind of, you know, developing new types of scales to look at risk. How is that impacting or how is that playing into the forecasting? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, pr probably three, four times a week now I'm meeting with CROs um, that are, are looking at their inventory and trying to figure out how do I categorize our, our pipeline um, into risk adjusted categories. So, you know, we see companies, um, it kind of started where there was a, a COVID-19 risk field that was rolled out where they evaluated every opportunity in the pipeline, certainly this quarter or next quarter, you know, this, this fiscal year and, and said, hey, was the budget impacted? Was the project impacted? Um, you know, was it just delayed? Um, is, it, is it still moving you know, smoothly? So that was kind of the first crack at it. And, and now we see companies even iterating on that where they're, they're now saying, okay, is this tailwind? Is this headwind? Is it major tailwind? Is it major headwind? And, and now they're, you're hearing those things talked about in the forecast meetings, right? So, you know, what percentage of our committed deals um, are, uh, are, are tailwind companies or, you know, what is our tailwind coverage um, hmm. on, on, our, on our forecast, right? Or on our, our commit or on our, our, um, our budget. Um, so you're starting to see that data that's now surfaced up and, and driving how you look at the, the revenue projection. If companies wanted to flag, you know, tailwind versus headwind companies, uh, how, what data source are you using? Or just, is that, is that a subjective thing going through? Or are you using, in a structured way, certain industry-specific data to drive that? Yeah, you know, what we've seen most companies doing is they'll take a first crack at it, maybe by way of industry, or, or there are, you know, there's been some research done, um, and they'll ingest that into their, you know, their CRM, their system of record. Um, as a starting point, and then they'll go have the reps pressure test that, right? And again, that's what you're seeing in these forecast meetings and one-on-one -on -one meetings when reps and managers are talking about deals, you know, it's asking them these tough questions, right? Hey, hey, do we know, are they on the other side of the replan yet? It, 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 we think it's a tailwind industry. Yeah. Have we figured out what's actually going on within their customer base? And is it actually a tailwind industry? Kind of validating some of those things. Love it. I, I wanted to also ask you about uh, experimentation. And as you and I were just chatting, the thing that I'm most excited about now is that we are seeing just incredible um, sales innovation, as you mentioned, sales execution. But we're seeing a time of just the best of sales right now really showing up. Uh, tell me a little bit about the experiments that you're running and, and what are you seeing out there? Yeah, well, first I'll agree with you. Um, you know, you, you look back um, and you think about when some of the, the, the best pivots for, for sales have happened. Um, I'm a big Challenger fan. I think, um, you know, Challenger it was a really good thing that um, when, it, uh, when it came to the, to the market, it, it helped change how people sell in a positive way. And you look, about, you look at when that was born, it was in 2008, right? The, their research started in the middle of the downturn. Um, and, and that's where that was bred from. I think you're going to see something really similar come out of this pandemic environment. Um, for me, the, the thing that I'm certainly bringing with me, and it'll be with every sales team I ever lead from here forward, is the empathy that people are selling with right now, like real empathy, you know, actually thinking about the other human being on the other side of the, you know, the Zoom meeting and, and thinking about their families and, 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 you know, how important this time is to them and, you know, what, what, what their jobs are like right now. So that, that's one thing I think um, that that's going to be really exciting to watch, hopefully come forward from here and we keep with us is the empathetic yeah. part of selling. Um, as for um, creative, creative stuff, you know, look, we're, um, uh, we're selling in a, in a whole new world, right? Uh, and one of the things we're trying to do remarkably at Clarity is be virtual sellers. So, you know, you can see your course background, you know, we're playing with backgrounds and things like that. 
one of the things Clary's doing that's kind of fun is we actually took our pitch deck or our, our teach deck, as we call it, no. and we, um, we, we built that in the Zoom background. So as we go and do our pitch, I can do the pitch with this in the background behind me, right? Um, and uh, fun, fun examples like that, but we're challenging our sellers and asking them every day, you know, what are the challenges you're running into? How can we help? What, what assets do you need? What's working? What isn't working? Uh, we have a Slack channel called The Daily Win, where anytime someone has something that's, that's working, they, they post it there. We, we rally behind it. So those kind of things. I, this is the execution we're talking about. This is the, the move forward. I think it's brilliant. I want to just go back briefly to empathy, because if we look back in the rearview mirror, it was a little, it still was challenging, but it was crazy six weeks ago. And so empathy was really real. I mean, we were all very much worried about what each day looked like. We're starting to get a better picture. We're starting to look forward. How do we do empathy today? And what, when you talk about how you want that to stay with you forever, what does that look like as we get into a more steady state? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. Um, I think um, it, it starts, empathy for me, it starts internally. Um, you know, if, if, you're a, if your team is empathetic, um, you're gonna bring that to your customers and, and your you know, future customers. Um, so that, I, I think that's a big, um, you know, a big thing that we're seeing is, you know, you used to join a call, you know, Jim, we'd meet for the first time and I, I'd ask you, you know, how's your day and, you know, yeah. how was the weekend? And now, uh, you know, you actually kind of mean it, right? <laughs> you want to make sure people are healthy and happy. And um, so I, I think it starts there is, you know, how do we, how do we ingrain these, these empathetic yeah. practices into our teams uh, internally? And then, um, Again, as as we um, as we bring that into how we sell, um, I, I think it's going to start with hiring, right? So when we when we go to hire from here forward, I, I certainly am going to um, as I screen candidates moving forward. You know, I'm going to ask them how, what changed with how you sell during the you know the pandemic, and um, you know, how do you think about empathy now um, after having gone through that, and you know, just kind of challenging people with those types of questions and. I think we do those things. You'll, you'll see, you know, empathy carry yeah. forward and, and um, creative ways to do that. Look, work is a lot more fun when you can be real and you are getting to know people, uh, the empathy side. So the, the person that has influenced me the most on empathy is Mike Gamson. I don't know if you remember Mike from uh, LinkedIn leading their, their, their revenue group, but empathy was always the word in every video you see and every stage he'd be on. And I think uh, he was ahead of his time on that one, which was fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's a, a super stud. <laughs> Let me ask you about one more data point. So we were looking at um, payment terms. And, and when you think about forecasting and we think about the role of the CFO today, what we're seeing is that there really has been a significant improvement uh, on the net 30 payment terms. So it used to be 76% of deals had net 30 payment terms pre-COVID. It dropped as low as 56%. And now it's back up to 66%. Talk about a little bit of the sales execution from getting these deals closed right now. You know, we're, we're starting to get into the second half of Q2. What are you seeing out there? How are you coaching your folks? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, what you talked about reps becoming world-class sellers in this environment, you know, certainly one of the things that we've seen is um, a whole new developed selling motion in the office of finance, right? Um, Clary typically sells to chief revenue officers, chief marketing officers, things like this. And um, in our world, we're, we're still having to sell to those people, but now we're also having to always get signed off by the CFO and pretty much every engagement, even renewals. We have renewals coming up where we have to go justify renewals at the CFO level. So with that, you know, um, again, I think what the sellers are going to bring with them from a sales innovation perspective moving forward is, you know, being masters of revenue in the office of finance and understanding how to go, um, have conversations with the finance team in, in a way that's uh, impactful and payment terms, right. Is something we're seeing a ton of right now. It's um, you know, as you think about kind of value engineering um, and, and, you know, how you tell your value story in these sales cycles, a lot of times you hear, you go back to ROI and things like this yeah. in today's environment, um, things like payment terms are becoming part of that value story. It's, um, you know, cash is king in a lot of companies right now, even big companies with, with deep pockets, cash is king. So, you know, as we work with these finance groups, yeah, we're seeing, um, we definitely saw immediately requests for um, much more aggressive payment terms, yep. net 60 right out of the box, um, net 45. We, you know, we saw a pivot to procurement teams asking for, you know, quarterly payments automatically or semi-annual and instead of annual. 
So the ability to, to be creative and flexible, but also know your own finances team's parameters and what's important to your organization, you know, that's the kind of balance that I think sellers are having to do right now. Learn, learn what's important to their company's operating plan, but also how to be empathetic to what's going on in the market and land yeah. some do you think companies need programs or incentives based around those payment terms that you're talking about? Or is it more just coaching of how to talk through it thoughtfully with uh, your customers? Um, you know, I think it's both. Um, you know, it's still a negotiation in the end, right? Um, and, you know, you go back to sales 101, no, no unilateral concessions and negotiations. So, you know, even though we're being empathetic with our terms, uh, you know, we're also coaching our team to, to ask for something in return, which, which is fair. Um, and we're seeing great things come out of that. Um, so, you know, creative deal structures on both sides that we wouldn't have thought about uh, without, you know, thinking to ask for, for some, some um, you know, give and take. So, um, yeah, I think there's definitely training that, that's happening, um, um, but also just kind of being open to, to this type of, um, you know, selling scenario. I love it. I appreciate it. Hey, one last question for Anthony. You mentioned... Um, uh, blue light glasses that I see you've got on you. How are you curious for those that, you know, we're all going through this. How are they uh, impacting just your daily experience? Yeah. You know, I mean, look, um, you know, I mentioned at the start of the call that, um, you know, on, on a given day, I could have 10 zoom meetings right yeah. now. And I, I didn't realize that um, the impact that staring at a screen from 18 inches away had on me all day. And, um, so a team member of mine, Maya Conant, um, had suggested the blue light glasses. And, um, you know, for me, it's kind of like, uh, um, you know, taking joint pills or something, right? Like you don't realize your joints are bad until you start taking vitamins for them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, when I don't wear these now, I can tell I've, I have headaches, more headaches throughout the day. I can kind of feel, you know, pressure in the back of my head when I'm staring yeah. at the screen all day. So, you know, um, little things like this, right, are uh, taking care of yourself um, have, have been helpful. So, yeah, I might That's not great. look as cool as, uh, as, as I, I do without them, but uh, they're, uh, they're super helpful. No, they're great. I'm, I was super curious because I, I haven't tried them myself, but I think we're all thinking about the same things right now. So I appreciate you. Well, coaching tip, get the uh, non-reflective ones because you can see my, <laughs> uh, my screen in mine. So there you go, freebie for when you go uh, buy some of these. That's exactly why we do these briefings now. We've nailed it. So, hey, Anthony, really appreciate you kicking off Monday with us. Uh, super insightful. Love the experiments. I love the backgrounds that you're, you're testing there. Um, lots of fun. So thanks so much. Yeah, you got it, Jim. Hey, thanks for having me. And, and thanks for having these, uh, these briefings. Um, you know, at Clary, same thing. We're, we're seeing that, you know, sales leaders just want to get together right now and talk and, and understand what's going on. And, and, and trade ideas. Um, so please keep doing this. Um, we, we, uh, we love it. The market loves it. So thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, Anthony. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good day.